Well, I have a great group of clergy colleagues and um, one of my more fit colleagues decided to put a team together. Now, there was a team last fall, and I wasn't part of that. And that was a team of women and non-binary folks. And then this spring, put it out a wider call and said, hey, do you want to join us? And I thought, sure, let's see. I hate mud, and I'm terrified of heights. What could go wrong? And I, I signed up. I thought, That's, this is going to be fun anyway. But in order to do this, I had to prepare because I'd seen the website and I knew there were obstacles and I saw what some of the obstacles were. This is my team, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. And so I had to prepare. I knew I needed more upper body strength. I started doing some training and maybe you know that I hurt my shoulder while I was training. So I went to physical therapy and in physical therapy, our goal together was to prepare me for the obstacles. And, and it's not just that you have to prepare your body, you have to prepare your equipment. What do you think is the biggest thing that happens to every single person at a Tough mutter? Uh, it's easy. You get muddy. You get really muddy. And while that might be fun in the moment, and on a really hot day, mud is a good, now I know why elephants and pigs and all those animals roll around in the mud. Oh my goodness, it really cools you off. But it's not how I want to get back in my car. <laughs> so preparing means packing the things you will need. Clean clothes to change into, a towel, um, having the right equipment for the day, having sunscreen, and shoes that tie well and won't come off in the mud, probably, because, because you're not going to be a happy camper if that happens, right? So thinking about all the things you will need ahead of time. Preparing. That's a good lesson for life in general. What do I need in order to accomplish what my goal is? What do I need in order to accomplish my goal? That's a good lesson for churches too. What do we need now to prepare for the future that we envision? Preparing. So now, would you show the team slide again? It's good to have a team. That's my team. You might guess that this is before we started. <laughs> I'm the one in the white hat. The hat stayed white, other things didn't. It's good to have a team. Why is it good to have a team? Teams support you and cheer you on and help you. At the start of the race, in the, in the starting paddock, we, it was alluded to in the reading, there's a pep talk. And it's a really good pep talk. And one of the things that the person says is, look around you, these are all your teammates. He wasn't just talking about the teams that we came with. And most teams do get a team t-shirt in different colors and you know whatever they want so you can identify the teams. But he was telling us that everybody out there on that day was our teammate. Look out for one another. Isn't that good advice for, for, for life in general? Look out for one another, have a team. A congregation is a team, isn't it? We're bound together. Now, you don't have to agree with every single thing ever that all of your teammates think and say and do, but you do have to support one another. You do have to support one another. By the way, I think one of my teammates might be watching the service today. And, you know, that makes me a lot more nervous than preaching to all of you. Can I say that? Teamwork is important. 
Can we have the, the next slide? Another thing that we need to, oh yes, that's also the team. And we were ready to go. When you're a team, you, you stick together, right? Now, more things that you need to do for, for the race, you have to stay hydrated, right? It's a lot of work and you wanna drink enough water and that's just good advice for people anyway. Drink enough water, stay hydrated. What do you need in life to sustain your soul, to sustain your being? What is your water? I mean, we all need the literal water, but what's, what's your water that's sustaining you? Make sure you're getting enough of it. Give help and get help. Sometimes we're better at one than the other. So these obstacles are designed so that you really can't do them alone. Most of them. You need to give and get help. And you see that, that a teammate of mine and I are climbing up. There were two of these mud mounds. You got into the muddy water and then you climb out and you climb over the mound and you do it again. And you can see that our teammates are helping us, pulling us up. We have to do some of the work. You, you have to, you can't just let somebody do it for you. We, you had to get a foothold and get in there, but you have to accept the help and you have to give the help too. You accept the help and then you give the help. Some of us are really good at giving help, but we, we're not so great at accepting it when we need it. It's so important to know when you could use a little assistance. There's no shame in that. If there were shame in it, we'd have to ask ourselves, why do we offer help? Hmm. Ask for help when you need. <clears throat> Give help when you can. Sometimes you have to get dirty. Sometimes you just have to get in the mud. Now, we're a little dirtier there. And you can see that the sign says, this water is holy. H-O-L-E-Y. Beware of what's under your feet. As you move along, pay attention to the obstacles. Um, what's, what's the next slide? Can you see the next slide? Yes. So you do have to get dirty and you have to know your limits. There were holes in the water that we couldn't see. One of my teammates discovered that swimming through it was probably going to be the easiest way. I couldn't help but doing the face planting. Um, you know, some people pay a lot of money to get mud on their faces, I'm just going to say. Uh, but my limits here were that it wasn't working for me to try and walk through as the people behind you are doing. It was just going to be easier to swim. Now, your limits might come in different ways. One of, one of our team members, it was such a hot day. If you remember two weeks ago, it was blisteringly hot. And one of my teammates was getting some heat sickness. That's a limit. And it's not the same limit every time, right? It's not something we expect. But when it happens, take care of yourself. Know your limits. Another one of my teammates had recently been ill and was advised not to, to do most of the obstacles, but that team member took all of these wonderful pictures. Know your limits. That doesn't mean don't try things, but take care of yourself. Now, everyone can do something. Can we move to the next slide? Everyone can do something. And some of the obstacles were really, really hard. I tried every obstacle except for the electric shocks because 
No. <laughs> but there was one obstacle that I could not, I, 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 I did not have the upper body strength for. I couldn't get up. Have any of you climbed ropes in school? Do you remember climbing ropes? And this involved climbing a rope and going up a wall, and I just couldn't do it. I tried it, but that was my limit. It went around. And that's okay. You can do that. Everyone can do something. Did I mention I'm terrified of heights? I don't know if you get a sense because this is at the bottom. This thing is a huge A-frame. The picture that I'm pointing to is of people climbing on a netted structure. That one was really hard. And that is most of us there hanging off of the ropes, climbing up. And then you climb up the one side and you climb down the other. You go across the top and you climb down the other. I see some eye rolling in the room, like, oh my goodness. Yes, it was scary. This was the obstacle that was scaring me the most as I, as I was looking at it. But I challenged myself. I challenged myself because this was for me about facing my fear, overcoming my fear. Well, maybe not overcoming, I'm still afraid of heights, but facing my fear and doing a thing anyway. And I'll tell you that my teammate who had to go to the medical tent and missed a lot of the obstacles was able to come back and we helped her to, do, to, to get up. We helped each other to get up because if you're looking at the bottom of the picture, you'll see that the netting doesn't go all the way down. First, you have to get up on like this 10 foot wooden wall. That's just kind of a straight, it's really hard and you need teamwork to do that. But we work together and everybody got up and over this. Everybody got up and over. What are your challenges that maybe you've been afraid to face? This is my favorite. This one was my favorite obstacle. So if, if, you're, if you can't see this, if you're calling in on a phone, this is a picture of two long white boxes that rotate in a pool of mud and people have to push and pull and get over so you have to get over it they don't turn on their own you have to turn them again i'm in the white hat and in the left picture you can see that i'm hanging on and people on on, on the side that it's moving to are pulling the box over it's too big to just to just climb up over so you have to grab it and kind of ride it over and only two or three people can do it at a time. So this requires coordinated teamwork. You pick somebody to go over or a few people to go over and the rest of the people on the on, on the first side are pushing and the people on the far side are grabbing and pulling and between one and three people on the top kind of come over and then when you get over you can see in the picture on the right hand side what am I doing I'm pulling it's teamwork you get help and then you give help right working together as a coordinated team though is not just individually giving help when do we have to do that out in the world work together as a coordinated team quite a lot Quite a lot. When we're doing church work, we have to do things as a coordinated team. We have individual contributions, but we, we vote as a, as a team together. We work in the same direction. If you're on the board or other committees, you know that the committee makes decisions together and we hope for consensus, but in the end, we, sometimes we have to just take a vote. It's teamwork, and then we support whatever the team has decided. We support whatever the team has decided. Even if I personally, because I'm tight, even if I personally didn't love the decision or had the opposite view, once we've decided, I support and you support what the group has decided. And we work as a team. Where else in your life do you do that? 
Gesundheit. So again, this was my favorite obstacle. Now sometimes you just have to take a plunge. Can we see the next slide? Yeah, I'm second from left in this slide. And if you're if you're calling in on a phone, this is a picture of four of us on the team sliding down an incline into a pool of really cold, cold water. There's an ice truck um, nearby. It's freezing water now. It happened to be a super hot day. So that was all right. Um, it's not hard. It just takes a little faith. You just have to do it. Just do it. I was actually wearing Nikes. Just do it. Have you ever had to just jump in and do something? No testing the water, no seeing, just jump in. Sometimes we have to do that in life. Just jump in. If we don't like it, well, we can get out. If it's not the right thing, we try something else another time. You'll notice there are no stonemasons here carving anything in stone. It's just the plunge, and we did it. Now, celebrate your victories, large and small. What's the next slide? You can see how miserable we all look in this picture. <laughs> if, if, again, if you can't see the slide, um, it's a group of, it's our whole team, most of them um, with huge smiles, and some people are a lot muddier than others in this photograph. Celebrate. Celebrate small things. You don't have to wait until the very end of a thing. You don't have to wait until you've accomplished the hugest thing you've ever accomplished to celebrate. We celebrated all along the way. This happens to be at the end. You can see the finish line. But we celebrated at every obstacle. We took lots of pictures along the way, if you couldn't tell. I'm not showing you all the pictures. We'd be here for a long time. But we need to do that. We need to pause and say hooray pat ourselves on the back and each other and say, good job, good job, that was fun. I'm glad to do this with you. Where can we do that in church life and in home life and in our communities? What do you have that you can celebrate today, this week, if you're on social media and, and, and you might see a lot of posts from people, yay, adulting is so hard, but I did, I did this thing today. Yay, I made the bed. I haven't done that in a week. Before. Yeah. I remember, I remember, I'm going to tell a story about you. It's not really about you. But after my daughter Cecilia was born and I was at home with the new baby, and do, I, I would tell my husband things like, I got the laundry done today. Oh no, it's not dry, but it's washed. I got the laundry washed today. It felt like such a huge accomplishment. Celebrate accomplishments. Celebrate little things and big, because where will we be if we never celebrate anything, if we're waiting for everything to be perfect? How sad would that be? Have fun. This is our finisher photo, and you see they also gave us they also gave us finisher headbands and the people in the green headbands it's because it wasn't their first they this is their repeaters. And the rest of us got just the white headband. But have fun do, do we look like we're having fun there. If we do it's because we were. There are enough serious things in the world and enough serious things in life. You can do serious things and accomplish serious things and still have fun doing them. Is life going to be fun from beginning to end and nothing but? No, no, we know that. 
But take time to enjoy yourself. Take time to do something fun. Take find time to find the enjoyment in different things. Remember that the lotus flowers only grow, grow and bloom in mud. They said we have to get dirty sometimes. We do. Sometimes we have to get down into it get our hands dirty and our knees scraped. Um, I'm wearing stockings today because I, I don't want you to see my knees all scraped up. They're still scraped, but that's all right. You're healing. Sometimes we have to do all that, but then look at what can come out. Allow yourselves to bloom. Take the nourishment where you find it. and grow, even if you are growing in the mud. Beloveds, these are my lessons from the mud. I hope you take them, dive in, and get dirty, and find something useful in these lessons. Namaste.